What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Toman and today's analysis video is going to be about the Premier League game between Chelsea and Manchester United. So Chelsea lined up in their normal 3-4-3 formation which mostly changed to 3-2-5 with the ball, with both the wing backs joining the front line. While Manchester United on the other hand lined up in a 4-3-3 formation on paper, but their formation on the ground was mostly a diamond 4-4-2 with Bruno Fernandes playing at the tip of the diamond. So today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is an app where you can find all the latest transfer news and stats about teams and players. So please don't forget to download the app, I'll put the link in the description. The first half of this game was completely dominated by Chelsea and Manchester United hardly ever got the chance to enter the Chelsea box. So this is how the two teams were lined up on the ground whenever Chelsea tried to build a play from the back. Manchester United never really tried to press the Chelsea centre-backs and they were happy to sit back in a mid-blow as they tried to cut Chelsea's centre passing options. As soon as Chelsea would pick a side to build a play, the Manchester United winger of that side would step up to press the Chelsea centre-back, with Bruno Fernandes and Rashford covering the two Chelsea midfielders from the front. Fred and McTominay were also keeping a very tight marking on Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Jorginho. And this way, Manchester United were able to trap the two Chelsea midfielders in the midfield. Matic was the free man and he was given the job of tracking Ziyech as Ziyech is often the man for Chelsea who likes to drop deep from the front line to open the passing lanes during the build-up phase. And similarly, whenever Chelsea chose Choloba to build a play, Rashford was the one to step out to press Choloba, with Bruno and Sancho cutting the passing lanes to Ruben and Jorginho. Bruno Fernandes steps out to press Thiago Silva, while Rashford and Sancho are keeping the passing lane close to Ruben and Jorginho. Thiago Silva plays the ball to Rudiger, so Sancho steps out to press Rudiger, and Bruno Fernandes immediately drops in the midfield to cover Jorginho. Out of the front three, two were always keeping a tight marking on the two Chelsea midfielders, while one of them was given the job to push up to press the man on the ball. Van Bissaka also moves up to help in the high press. So Kalimur Tsunodoy immediately tries to exploit the space that was left open by Van Bissaka. But McTominay was always there to provide cover to Aaron Van Bissaka. Fred and McTominay were mostly busy covering the two Chelsea midfielders, while Matic was given the job of tracking the deeper ones of CA. So whenever the Manchester United fullbacks decided to move up to press the Chelsea wingbacks, they left the spaces open on the wide areas for the Chelsea wingers to attack. So in order to cover those wide spaces, Manchester United decided not to push their fullbacks high up the ground without the ball. And that made it quite easy for Chelsea to build their play as they now had their wide wingbacks totally open to receive the ball with time and space. Now the Manchester United fullbacks are staying close to the Chelsea wingers and they are not moving up to press the Chelsea wingbacks. And that made it quite easy for Chelsea to move the ball forward. Here again, same shape from Manchester United, no pressure on the centre back as they once again sit in the mid block and try to cut the passing lanes to Ruben loftus and Jorginho. But the wide Chelsea wingbacks are totally free. Again, no pressure on the wingback who has so much space to receive the ball. And this is how Chelsea actually created most of their chances in the first half. Since the Chelsea wingbacks were given a free pass to receive the ball and move in Manchester United's defensive third, so they were able to create a 2v1 position on both flanks with Ziyech and Callum Hudson-Odoi. 2v1 position on both sides of the ground and the Manchester United fullbacks were not receiving any defensive support from their wingers and midfielders. Hakim Ziyech drops deep to receive the ball and he drags the fullback out of his position to open the space in the defense for the run of Reese James. Hakim Ziyech flicks the ball in the path of Reese James, and Reese James now have so much space to run into. The cross comes to Marcos Alonso, but he couldn't control the ball, and Chelsea missed a very good goal scoring chance. This time, Reese James drops in the midfield, and he drags Dallas out of his position to open the space in the wide area for Hakim Ziyech. The score at halftime was nil-nil, 
and Carrick must have seen enough to figure out that the Manchester United fullbacks were easily getting outnumbered in the wide areas. So in the second half, Carrick decided to drop McTominay and Maric in the defense. Whenever the Chelsea wingbacks moved up to create a 2v1 position against the Manchester United fullbacks, and this way, Manchester United were able to help their fullbacks to stop the wide overloads. McTominay has now dropped in the defense without the ball, and how does that help Manchester United? Dallas steps up to cover Reece James, and Bay can now cover Hakim Ziyech. Lindelof is covering Timo Wander, and on the far side, Van Bissaka and McTominay can stop the overload. So by dropping McTominay in the defense, Manchester United were able to neutralize the Chelsea overloads. Here we can see the complete picture of Manchester United's defensive line. No more overloads thanks to McTominay's deeper position. Here again, Dallas steps out to cover Reece James because now he knows that he has the cover from Eric Bay. Again, thanks to Maddich and McTominay, the Manchester United fullbacks were now able to step up without having to worry about getting isolated in a 1v2 position. The free spaces that Ziyech and James were enjoying in the first half were not there for Chelsea anymore. Manchester United, on the other hand, did not really offer too much offensively, and they mostly took their chances on transitions. Sancho and Rashford were keeping their high positions with Bruno Fernandes playing slightly behind the front two. Rashford and Sancho are trying to keep their high positions with Bruno Fernandes playing slightly behind the front two. Bruno Fernandes' deeper position has forced Rudiger to step out of his defense, and that has given Sancho the space to make a blindside run in the open space. Antonio Rudiger was taken out by Bruno Fernandes, and Sancho makes a free run in the open space, and he should have scored the goal. Manchester United's game plan was very clear. They were happy to sit back and give possession to Chelsea and they only took their chances on transitions. Chelsea definitely had the chances to take all the three points, but their poor decision-making and finishing cost them the points. So a lot of people keep asking me about the software that I use to analyze football games. And the software that I mainly use is ClipDraw. ClipDraw is actually offering a special Black Friday discount, and today is the last day to get the special discount. So you can click the link in the description to see what they have to offer. Thank you so much guys for watching the video, I hope you guys enjoyed it, please don't forget to like and subscribe.